Welcome to Walking by Faith. We believe that God is relevant to every aspect of our lives, and we want to help you live a life that is both authentic and on fire for Jesus. Want to dive deeper into today's message? Download the Walking by Faith app or click on the Beyond the Sermon link in the description. Pastor Duane explores the spiritual battle we face daily. Our adversary, the devil, seeks to steal, kill, and destroy. But through God's word, we can resist his attacks. He will also discuss the importance of transforming our minds, as instructed in Romans 12, 2, and the power of living according to God's truth. Let's get started with Stop the Devil's Lies. Today, we're just going to continue talking about a series we're in. We simply entitled Reversing the Devil's Decisions. So we all know God has a plan for your life. The Jerem- Jeremiah, the prophet, wrote it like this. He said, I know the thoughts I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not evil to give you a future and a hope. Uh, uh, God loves you. And, and his plan for you, it's good. It's for peace. It's to give you a future, to give you a hope. In Ephesians, it's called the good life. He made ready and prearranged for you. Uh, sometimes people think, well, if I, I know I thought this. I thought if I get right with God, I'll go to heaven, and that's good. But I'm going to have the most boring life. It's going to be terrible. I'm going to just love God, and it's going to be a terrible life. The truth is, God created you. And the Bible says he's prepared good works for you to, to do. He's prepared paths for you to walk on. And if you will follow God's plan, you will live the good life. There is no life like the life God has for you. It's the good life. By the way, the devil's life is the bad life. He'll tell you it's the good life, but it is the bad life. So Jesus described it like this. The thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's the devil's plan. If he could, he'd kill you. Uh, He wants to destroy your future. He wants to steal from you every blessing that God has for your life. With that in mind, Peter wrote this. This is 1 Peter 5 and verse 8. It says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil. Be sober, be vigilant. In other words... Uh, we need to know and recognize we are in a spiritual battle. You cannot be passive. You cannot be lukewarm, lazy, apathetic, and have victory in your life. He says, if you're going to withstand what the devil is coming after you with, he says, you need to be sober and you need to be vigilant. You need to understand there is an enemy of your soul. He says, because your adversary, the devil, he goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Listen, a lot of people think the devil's in hell. He's not. You say, where is he? He he, he goes up and down your street. He is going around looking for someone to devour. Now, who does he devour? Listen, passive people. If you are not sober and vigilant, if you're just with this attitude, well, whatever will be, will be. Loke sera, sera. We'll pray, and if it happens, fine. And if it doesn't, we'll just blame it on God's sovereignty. If that's your attitude, you will never walk in victory. You've got to be sober. You've got to be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, goes about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Passive people. Ignorant people, people who participate, those are the participate with the devil. Open the door for the devil. Now, listen, if you sin, God does not love you less. You understand that, right? He doesn't love you less if you sin. You love God less when you sin. And the, the, the Bible says that don't let the deceitfulness of sin harden your hearts. Now, this is what sin says. This is the deceitfulness of sin. Sin says you can sin and it won't make any difference. You just say, God, forgive me, and he'll forgive me, and it won't make any difference. The truth is this. It does not change 
how God loves you. It does change how you love God. But the most important thing is this. Sin changes your relationship to the devil. Because you gave him an inroad into your life. Right? The Bible says, do not give place or opportunity to the devil. And when we sin and we don't repent, we give Satan an opportunity. So be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Verse 9, resist him, steadfast in the faith. Now, the Bible tells us to resist him. In James, it says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. If you're resisting the devil, trying in your own strength, it will not work. Right? We need to be submitted to God, submitted to the word of God, submitted to the spirit of God. If we stand against the devil, the Bible says, he will flee. 2 Timothy 2.26 says this but that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him, that's Satan, to do his will. So the Bible tells us that Satan gets some people and he gets them captive. And what are they doing? They're doing Satan's will. When you're doing Satan's will, it's because your will is passive. You are not resisting the devil. Listen, the devil cannot make you do anything. Lip Wilson said, the devil made me do it. No, he didn't. The devil suggested it, and you, do, you went for it. He can't make you do anything. All right? But if you are passive, lukewarm, lazy, apathetic, he is going to have you for lunch. Be sober, be vigilant. Now, most of the time, the way that he attacks you know, is he attacks us in our thoughts. Look at Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent, this is the devil, is more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman. What did he do? He said to the woman. What the devil will do with you and me is he will put a thought into our mind. Has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. God said, you'll surely die. The serpent said, you will not surely die. The devil comes with thoughts, and those thoughts are going to be contrary to the word of God. In fact, that's how we know. In fact, I, I will make a, a couple of statements here. What bondage is, bondage is a house of thoughts. It's a house of thoughts. What a stronghold is, it, it, it is something that has been built in your mind with thoughts. Wrong thoughts are a stronghold. 2 Corinthians verse 10. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Now, what the Bible is talking about is about you live in a natural physical body. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 23 says, may the very God of peace sanctify you completely. So it's going to tell us what is your entirety. Spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are a trichotomy. You have three parts. You are a spirit. You live inside of a body, and you have a soul or a mind. When you come to God and receive Jesus, he makes you new in your spirit. That's where he does something. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. Excuse me, verse 17. If anyone is in union with Christ, you are a new creature, a new creation. The old has passed away. The old is passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, the old that passes away is not your body, right? If you were ugly before you became a Christian, sorry. <laughs> if you were fat before you became a Christian, sorry. If you were bald, sorry. Your body doesn't change, right? 
It's your spirit that changes. In fact, your mind does not even change. You still have the same thoughts that you had before. God does something with your spirit, right? So the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So we walk in the flesh. So as a, as a, as a human being, you are a hybrid being. You say, what does that mean? That means you function in two different worlds. Because you live in a physical body, you contact the physical realm, and you live in the physical realm. But the real you on the inside of that body is a spirit. And that's the part of you that contacts the spiritual realm. Right? In Hebrews chapter 1, the Bible says that God's angels are spirits. But they don't have a physical body like you do. In fact, in John chapter 4, Jesus said, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. So you're a hybrid being in the fact that you can function in this natural world. But you are a spiritual being. You're a spirit and you can function in the spiritual world. We walk in the flesh. You live in a physical body, but we don't war according to the flesh. You cannot physically have a fight with the devil, but you can spiritually. For the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, they're not natural, they're not physical, they're not a part of this physical world, but they're mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. So what Satan wants in your mind and in my mind is he wants a stronghold. And again, that stronghold is literally made up of thoughts, things you believe that are not true. They're mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Where is Satan going to attack you? In your thoughts. And many people, they, they literally, whatever comes in their mind, they think about it. They just accept it. I, it was Martin Luther 500 years ago who said this. He said, you can't stop a bird from flying over your head, but you can stop them from making a nest in your hair. So what that means is this. You can't stop a wrong thought from coming, but you, you should not let it stay in your mind. You and I need to have a filter for every thought that comes. Every thought that comes that is contrary to the word of God and to the knowledge of God, we need to reject it and we need to bring it captive to the obedience of Christ. We need to say, no, this is the truth. This is what God says. This is what I believe. This is what I think. This is what I speak. And this is what I do. That's how you take a thought captive. You cannot let your mind be a grand central station where just any and every thought comes in and you receive every thought. Because just like Satan came to Eve with a thought, he'll come to you and he will come to me with thoughts. Thoughts that are contrary to the word of God. 2 Timothy chapter 3. There's nothing like the written word of God for showing you the way to salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Every part of scripture is God-breathed. What that means is this. It wasn't Moses. It wasn't King David. It, it wasn't Peter, James, or John that wrote what's in your Bible. They were moved by the Holy Spirit and wrote it down. It is God-breathed, every part of Scripture, and it's youthful in one way or another. Shows us truth, exposes our rebellion, corrects our mistakes. How many of you know nobody even wants to believe they make a mistake anymore? Nobody wants to believe what they did is wrong, right? But what God's Word is supposed to do is show you where you're in rebellion against God, show you the mistakes, the sins that you make, it's correcting our mistakes, trains us to live God's way. 
so that through the word we are put together and shaped up for the task which God has for us. Now, you may not have grasped this, but in Ephesians 2.10, it says that God has prepared good works for you to do. And he has prepared paths ahead of time for you to walk in. God wants to use you. But if we are not prepared by the word of God, if we are not put together in shape for the task God has prepared for us, we literally miss our purpose. We miss what God created us to do. So Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. How is God going to change you? By changing the way you think. Because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. As a man thinks in his heart, the Bible says, so is he. One translation says, so he becomes. As your thoughts. That's why this devil wants to get the wrong thoughts in your mind and have it create a stronghold that keeps you from God's blessing, from God's purpose for your life. So it says, let God transform you. So God does not automatically do something. He wants to do something, but you've got to let God do it. Now, what that means is this, that you and I have to have a commitment because we are not to copy the behavior and customs of this world. Let me just tell you that Hollywood is trying to fill you with their morals, their values, and their purposes. And if you, are get, if you are more in the light of your phone, your computer, and the screen in your house than you are in the light of God's word, you are not going to be changed. Because what Hollywood is trying to do is it's trying to get you to copy their behavior and their customs, their values and their morals and their purposes. So what we've got to do, if we're going to let God change us, We've got to make a commitment to give him the time. We've got to make a commitment to get into God's word because that's how he's going to change you. He's going to change the way you think. You see, when you read a book, whatever that book is, right now, Jeannie and I are reading a book by Joyce Myers. So when we read that book, we're reading the thoughts of Joyce Myers. But here's the thing. When you read the Bible, you're reading the thoughts of God. And the interesting thing about the Bible is this. When you read the Bible, the author shows up. He shows up and starts to show you your rebellion, your mistakes, how you need to turn in a different direction. He shows you your rebellion. And so it has to be a commitment that I'm going to put time in the Word of God, and I am going to take some of these influences that are coming at me every day from our culture, from Hollywood, from tradition, from everything that's going on around us, and we are going to cut it off. I thought that would go over like that. I really did. But that's, see, if you're going to let God change you, you're going to have to have more of the light of the gospel coming into you than you are what culture is telling you, what Hollywood is telling you, what tradition is telling you, and often even what our friends and our family are telling us. Let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Now, Jesus said this in, in, uh, in Mark's gospel. He said, be careful what you're hearing. For the measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you. And more besides will be given to those who hear. So Jesus is saying, we need to hear the truth. We need to get the truth. But we need to more than just hear it once. The measure of thought and study, the measure of time that you put into thinking about, meditating on, studying, reading, hearing the word of God is going to be the amount that it's able to change your life. Now, if you're getting 80 hours a week from the world and an hour a week from the word, 
That's not going to work. God is not going to be able to change the way you think. Now, Barna's research group said this about Christians just like you and me. He said there are 4% of us that have a Christian worldview. 4% that have let God change the way they think. Whatever situation comes up, the first thing that you think of is, what does the Bible say? What does God say about that? Just 4%. Psalm 119, verse 128. Therefore, David said, I, therefore, I consider all of your precepts, your word concerning all things to be right. Okay? So God's right about marriage. He's right about raising kids. God's right about everything. He's right about money. He's right about forgiveness. He's right about forgiving people. God is right about everything. And when we find out what God says, we need to reject the way we've been living. Reject what our culture tells us. Let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. And again, the purpose of the Bible is to change how you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you which is good and pleasing and perfect. The strongholds that Satan has in your life and in my life are because of our wrong beliefs, our wrong thoughts. So in Mark chapter 7, verse 13, Jesus says, and so you cancel the word of God in order to hand down your traditions. Other translations say you make the word of God of no effect because of your traditions. Uh, Let me give you just a a couple of those that that came to my mind rather quickly in the last couple of days. Uh, I've had people come to me and say, uh, God made me sick so he could teach me something. Do you know there's not one person that Jesus ever said to them, you know, you're in a lesson right now and God doesn't want to heal you until you learn the lesson. You know, Jesus did not say that one time. Somebody says, God made me sick to make me more like Jesus. Jesus is not sick. He's not sick. He's not making you more like Jesus. But those are traditions that keep us from believing what God said, that he would forgive all our iniquities and heal all our diseases. Another one um, is is God wants me poor so I can be holy. Now, now, I, I honestly thought that for, for quite a few years. When, when Jeannie and I, uh, were, were, we were married less than a year. We went to Mexico and lived there for seven years as missionaries. Now, we went to Mexico. We had zero support. Do you understand? Zero. There was not one church that helped us for three and a half years. Right? So, so we're there, and, and, and literally, we are believing God like for everything, And we were working, doing a lot of distribution of Christian material. And there was a large church in California called Melody Land Christian Center. Now, understand, this is almost 50 years ago. So they actually send somebody down from their missions department and said, who are these people? And so they came down. This man came down. He stayed with us, I'm going to say five or six days. And I I remember we were, it was the last day he was with us. And uh, he took us out to eat at the Best Western Motel. You remember that, Jeannie? Yeah, okay. So he says to us, he says, uh, uh, what church, you know, how much support do you have? And we said, not any. And, and he said, what do you mean, none? I, I said, well, we're just believing God. And he said, well, this is, I promise you right now. He said, we will send you $500 a month starting next month. And he said, probably we'll start at $1,000 a month. And this is what I said to him. I said, oh, No. I said, don't do that. I said, we want God to bless us. Duh. (laughs) You know, Jesus called his his followers the disciples. I'm kind of like, duh. (laughs) It's kind of like me. I'm like, I look back and I think, how stupid could I thought? If if people got involved, then it wasn't God. How many of you know God uses people? God uses people. You say, have you changed? Try me. (laughs) But now now listen, honestly, I thought, you know, you're supposed to be poor so you can be holy and you can serve God. Now, this is what the Bible says. 
How many of you know when we think one thing and the Bible thinks something else, we need to throw out what we think? 2 Corinthians 9.10, for God, who gives seed to the farmer to plant, and later on good crops to harvest and eat, will give you more and more seed to plant and will make it grow so you can give away more and more fruit from your harvest. You know, if all we're doing is thinking about ourselves, it can be pretty selfish. Well, I've got all I need. Well, how about we think about beyond you and beyond me? How about we think about the world that needs Jesus? Right? So, so literally, it says God wants to bless you. And he wants to give you what? More and so you can do what? Give more and more. Now, when God blesses you, you're going to be blessed. There's going to be plenty for you. But God wants you to give more and more so that you can be a blessing to more and more. I thought, well, you just need to be poor to serve God. Listen, the best thing you can do for the poor is not be one. Get blessed so you can bless them. Right? We need to look beyond just what do I need and what can I do to be a blessing to others? So Jesus said, this is John 8, to those Jews who believed in him, he said, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. You will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Now, when it says there to know, right, it's not talking about something that you intellectually understand in your head. It is something that you experience. It is something that you do. So you know the truth and you do the truth. And Jesus said that, with that, it will set you free. But the truth doesn't set you free. Even the truth that you intellectually know doesn't set you free. But it's the truth that you experience. It's the truth that you're doing that sets you free. So we had to have more than just this intellectual knowledge of the truth. Now, I'd like to just go to one more scripture this morning, and that's Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. You know, the King James says it like this. It says, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that's written therein, and then you'll make your way prosperous. You'll have good success. Uh, the basic English Bible, I, I have been meditating on this, and this is how it says it. Let this book of the law be ever on your lips and in your thoughts day and night so that you may keep with care everything in it. Then a blessing will be on all your way and you will do well. Let it ever be on your lips and in your thoughts, day and night, so that you may keep or do. So there's really, there's three things here. Number one, talk the word. Number two, think about the word. Number three, do the word. Talk the word, think about the word, do the word. That is literally God's recipe to change the way that you think to bring the blessings that God wants in your life. Listen, if you will talk the word, think the word, and do the word concerning what God says about marriage, your marriage is going to be blessed. If you will talk the word, think the word, and do the word about your job, your job is going to be blessed. You say, what does that mean even? I mean, well... When you do whatever it is that you do is unto the Lord, right? That's the kingdom of God right there. That's God's kingdom. God's kingdom is, Jesus said this. He said, pray your kingdom come, your will be done on earth like it is in heaven. Again, God's not trying to just get you to heaven. He's trying to get heaven into you. He's trying to get the kingdom of God into you. 
Whenever you do what it is that you do as unto the Lord, and you do it with all your heart as unto the Lord, that's the kingdom of God. Right there. You're a teacher, and you do it as unto the Lord with all your heart, you're bringing the kingdom. Every Sunday at, at 730, uh, I have a, a little meeting with uh, a couple of our key staff people. And, and we meet out here next to the coffee kiosks. And uh, how many of you have ever had coffee Josiah made? Oh, you poor, you, you people. Oh, my goodness. He is incredible. I think he's the best barista in the world. And he makes this beautiful heart. And, and so I'm sitting there this morning, and he brings me my coffee in this mug, and it's got this flower thing in there. And I'm just thinking, that's the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> that's the best coffee. And he did an amazing job. That's what Jesus, that's how Jesus would make coffee. <laughs> you know what? When you do what you do the way Jesus would do it, that's the kingdom of God right there. Jesus didn't say, look, he said, he said, don't think the kingdom's going to be here or it's going to be there. He said, the kingdom of God is within you. It's within you. It's when God's will is done on earth like it is in heaven. When you do whatever it is that you do as unto the Lord with all your heart, that's the kingdom. That's the kingdom right there. Joshua 1, 8, this book of the law, let it be ever on your lips and in your thoughts day and night that you may keep with care everything in it. And then a blessing will be on all your way, whether it's your marriage, whether it's your work, your attitude, your finances, your kids, your relationship. When we do it God's way, right? When we're talking what God says, thinking what God says, doing what God says, that's how he changes us, right? That's how he changes us. We're going to be blessed. God's blessing is going to be on. Wherever you put God first and do it God's way, God is going to bless you. Say, if this message touched your heart and you really realize you're not where you should be with God or you're not right with God, I'd like to pray a prayer with you. And I'd like to lead you in a prayer to surrender your life to Jesus and to receive the forgiveness that he has for you. Would you just bow your head and just pray these words out loud from your heart. Just make them your own. Just say, oh God, I believe that Jesus died on the cross. I believe his blood paid for my sins. I believe he rose again and I believe he's coming again. I give him all of my heart and all of my life. I hold nothing back and I receive the forgiveness that you have for me. I thank you I'm forgiven. I'm a part of your family on my way to heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just prayed that prayer from your heart, we believe that you are saved, that you're right with God, that you're on your way to heaven. Now, I wrote a book to help you keep growing spiritually. I want to send it to you absolutely free of charge. You can download that book or you can get contact us and we will get you a hard copy. I want to thank you so much for being with us today. We love you. We pray for you and God bless you. Congratulations on taking this amazing step with Jesus. We're thrilled for your new journey. If you have questions or want to learn more, our team is here to support you. To get your free copy of Pastor's book, Your New Life, click on the link in the description or download the Walking by Faith app. This book is packed with practical advice for a faith-filled life. Don't miss out. Claim your free copy today. Check out this powerful mini book, Reversing the Devil's Decisions by Pastor Dwayne packed with biblical wisdom and real life stories to inspire and transform your life. God has an amazing plan for you, full of abundance, while the devil's plan leads to misery. God's incredible love gives you the freedom to choose your path. Dive into this testimony-filled mini book and learn how to walk in victory. To purchase your copy, visit the WBF store at walkingbyfaith.tv. Light a spark of hope. Your generous support fuels Walking by Faith's mission to share God's message globally. Every gift, big or small, ignites hope in lives around the world. To give, click on the giving link in the description below. Check out walkingbyfaith.tv slash give or click on the giving icon in our app. Thank you for your unwavering support and spreading the message of hope and healing through God's word. Remember that you don't have to face these battles alone. 
If you need prayer, have questions, or need support, our prayer team is here for you. Leave us a comment or click the prayer link below to connect with our prayer team. Let's stand firm together, grounded in God's truth. Be blessed and have a wonderful week.